Welcome to RB's Games of the Year video where I will be talking about which games that I have played this year and I feel are the best or otherwise noteworthy. Starting with number 5 on my list Battlefleet Gothic Armada a sort of space RTS in the Warhammer 40k universe don't know m much about that lore but decent game and of course I have played more games than 5 this year but these are these are 5 I thought deserved a place on a list the rest were playable but not that good to be deserving a place on the list and uh, yeah, you got a com campaign, a skirmish mode, a sort of skirmish campaign. You play like skirmish battles one after another in some kind of as a character with the, with the same ships you buy and upgrade. So you play through the, you can play, well you can play freely play skirmish without any strings attached or you can play the skirmish like a career playing the same character through multiply skirmish battles anyway enough about Battlefleet it was good see if it's, if it's anything you would like I don't recommend it but I will say it was pretty good Number 4, Sid Meier's Civilization 6. Yeah, it was uh, good, especially for being at release. Lots of uh, new features and uh, gameplay mechanics, expanded religion, policies, more choice, more, more play styles more things to focus maybe another victory, religious victory was it you got two sort of science, not science but two different free trees you research through a science tree and then a culture tree which one uses science and the other uses culture to, to research through and you get uh, different technological stuff from the science tree and policies and uh, some units and abilities like peace treaties, uh, embassies and such things from it. The game in comparison to 5 has lost uh, a bit depth in, in units there are a bit less units unfortunately and I didn't like that especially since in 5 you had the rifleman unit with, which was this 1800s American Civil War kinda infantry unit now you, you just got muskets and then you got World War 1, 2 style infantry unit you got nothing in between and I dislike that. Overall, the unit progression feels too fast. You barely got any time to use a unit before it's time to upgrade again. That's mostly to do with the game speed, but still playing on on standard now that we got even a, a faster game speed online that's even faster than previous fastest quick speed even on standard it felt you you were progressing too quickly through the units and barely got the time to use them before you upgraded them to the next level so but it was good for the for a civilization minded interested person who just strategy, a light strategy interested person. 
I would recommend it. I should play more of it myself as well. Number three, Doom. I haven't really played any of the earlier games. Out of the id games, I have played Quake 4 and uh, Return to Wolfenstein. I also played a newer Wolfenstein, but that's not made by id. Anyway, I haven't pr tried the multiplayer, so this is only based on single player, which is a fantastic, enjoyable, easy feeling. Not as uh, easy as in difficulty, you have to be quick and or be ready to lose. Because it's, uh, it's a nice feeling, it's a comfortable, just enjoyable feeling to just run around kick some uh, demon ass and just be awesome be one badass killing machine who kicks ass all day barely any story and the story that there is you don't need to know about it just play just enjoy it just it's, the, it's a way to 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 calm down to feel at ease to just enjoy yourself of course games overall are, are that but this lets to do that in an FPS you don't need much thought just just act on your instincts and take it all in number two Deus Ex Mankind Divided The ending is disappointing It just ends It should have been longer That I will say Many were disappointed by that But otherwise it's a good game Not as a good story as the previous game but, uh, well, it got more stu story in Doom, but that's barely, well, my time-lapse with it's got a better story than Doom. So, yeah. It's, uh, well, it's decently enough. I wouldn't call it a good story. But enough about the story, the gameplay. You can sneak around, just go all in, guns blazing, use your hand blades and just stab people civilians even but uh, well you don't have to and you shouldn't do it either it's uh, maybe it was a bit easy and there's a lack of bosses but uh, yeah I thought it was enjoyable if you're the stealth or action FPS guy, it's not as much action as Doom, but it's pretty decent. Definitely a okay game if you're a stealth guy. Number one, Ultimate General Civil War. It was this was a big surprise. I had uh, only heard about it a couple of days that it was even coming out before I bought it and uh, yeah it's my game of the year you know I've played a bunch of Empire Napoleon Total War I like the, the musket gameplay moving around units informations that kind of stuff enjoy that and this is that only 2d not 3d but that's just good because it less it's less thing to worry about maybe not as cool not as cinematic but well it doesn't distract you then so it's more about tactics strategy and not how good it looks 
I think there are some skirmish, but I haven't tried it out because there is a such a good campaign. The game is currently in early access, but still game of the year. It's set in the American Civil War, as the previous games, Ultimate General Gettysburg, but that only took place in Gettysburg, the largest battle of the Civil War, I believe. This this takes place during the entire Civil War. They haven't added all the historical battles to the campaign yet. It only goes up to summer uh, 1862, but still great. You can play the campaign as either the Union or the Confederates. Then you pick a bunch of background and history to your general. Where did he serve earlier in the artillery, in the cavalry, in the infantry? After his military career, what did he become? Did he stay a general? Did he, did he become a congressman? Did he become a businessman? What skills did he get before the start of the game? And depending on your choices, you get different specialities as a general, what you're good at. Are you better at supplies, having more ammo before each battle? Are you better able to cheaper reinforce your troops? Do you know better? Are you better at recon? Do you know more things about the enemy before you go into battle? And so on. So that uh, is a pretty cool aspect. And those skills can level up during the game as you become a better and more successful general. So there was none of that in Gettysburg. It was only one battle, so there wasn't this overreaching large campaign aspect. You could change the battle who won and so on, but you were, you were stuck with that battle. Here you start with one small tutorial like battle then return back to the campaign screen you can build your army recruit regiments brigades companies you can select how how big you will you want them from i don't know what's the lowest let's say a hundred men to two thousand 3,000 men a unit. You can pick what weapons they should have. Should they have a cheaper but slower and less accurate uh, muskets? Or this expensive that like cost 10 times that, as much but is a rifle, have scopes and all that? Making you more effective elite units but can you have afford it? Do you want lesser but better? Uh, an, uh, a smaller amount but more elite troops or they want more troops but armed with cheapest rifles to have afford as many of them as possible quantity over quality or or the opposite and then you can get more cores you also assign generals, lieutenants, captains, colonels, all kinds of people, characters, who can also level up to your regiment, to your brigades, to be in charge of them, also giving them the name that that's Greg's regiment, that's Lee's regiment, and so on. And after each battle you get the, the statistics of how many one unit lost, how many you killed. And these units gain skills after each battle which which day, which you can level up your unit. But if you reinforce your unit with rookie troops, that skill will go down. But you have an option to avoid that. You can instead reinforce it with veteran troops, keeping the unit skill. Let's say rookie troops, the only thing that costs when you reinforce with rookie troops 
is the rifle you equip them with. Or otherwise they only cost manpower. You also got manpower. But if you reinforce with veteran troops, they also will be a, a huge money cost besides the weapon cost. So it depends. Can you afford to have a highly skilled army or do you have to have many but also less skilled troops? Is it just necessary or can you balance it? So the gameplay on the battlefield is great. I love it. It's just amazing. The campaign aspect your troops having skills, you reinforce, you reinforce them, you assign them generals, you switch between weapon types, you level up your general. You can capture weapons from the enemy during battles and equip your own soldiers with them, or sell the weapons and buy other ones. You got artillery, you got cavalry, you got skirmishers even, with their own weapons. The campaign aspect just improves what's already very good, and just have this huge scope of the American Civil War. This was makes it my game of the year. It's just that good. But more about the, the battle aspect. The gameplay. You position your armies. You can position them in forests, among fences, in cover on high ground. The game more cover pre presented just making them harder to hit they got morale which indicates when they will break and fall back regardless of what you say to them keep morale high reinforce it with your general keep them in good cover make sure the enemy that you flank the enemy that you charge to break them especially when they're weak Put them out to play, hurt them so much they either retreat or surrender. It's a great tactics game. It's not, it's not, it's not much micro. You don't have much abilities. You don't need to move individual soldiers. You move large regiment, put them into position, click a button when you want to charge. Between battles, you reinforce them and keep them good. It isn't too hard, it's just just right to make it very enjoyable. So my game of the year goes to Ultimate General Civil War. And it's very deserving of that, and it's just an early access, and it, uh, it can only become better from here. Highly recommend it. And it's cheaper now than it's in my early access, so I suggest you take this opportunity to get it. Now that's the five games of the year I have, but let's go through some other categories. Best DLC, Witcher 3 Blood and Wine. I loved the main game. This DLC was like a mini version of the main game. Just as good, perhaps even better. I should also say that Witcher 3 is my, my game of all time. Best game of all time. It's just what a every game should strive to be. The quality is almost unbeatable. It's, it's the new standard for what's, what's best. And uh, the DLC just expands on that with, uh, well, the main game can be like 200 hours long if you go through all of it. This DLC adds a couple of tens of hours more. It's worth it. Everything is worth it. If it's your kind of thing, go for it. I don't. I don't even play it for, for the gameplay really, or that it's hard. I just really like the story, and the gameplay. Even if it's not a favorite, it's just good enough to play through it anyway. Just play it on easy. The story and the characters and everything, the setting is just all worth it. 
especially in Blood and Wine. Most play this year again, Company of Heroes 2. I mod that game, I play my mods, I have put in hundreds of hours in it. It's good, it's great, it's worth it. Yeah, I really want them to make a new faction, but well, they're working on Dawn of War 3 and I don't, I don't see it happening, but they really want it. Still a good game with great potential and well, I like my mod for it. Try them out sometimes. Search for tank warfare, trench warfare, infantry warfare and a bunch of other ones. If you find my Steam channel, go into the workshop and you will find them. Great games that I played but didn't come out this year. Yeah, the name of that category is pretty self-explaining. Number 4, Battlefield Bad Company 2. Yeah, it took all the way to now for me to play it. Yeah. It's good. The campaign is really good. Like, I haven't played Battlefield 1. Some say it's the best thing ever. I highly doubt it. And some say it's just, what is this about the campaign? But the one campaign that I have played and can guarantee, at least for me, that it was very good is Bad Company 2. I have played the Freeze and Forge campaign and uh, yeah those are, aren't that memorable but this one is great characters great great gameplay great setting and everything go for it the multiplayer is still there as well for those that keep playing it free dawn of war one i still need to play more of it it's uh, by the same uh, studio that uh, made the company of heroes one and two. They made this before Company of Heroes one. Set in Warhammer 40k on RTS. It's aged a bit, but the gameplay is still good, and that's why I like it. Two Call of Duty two. Yes, I haven't actually really played it until now. I did play it a bit around the time on the Xbox when it came out but never really played the whole thing I didn't manage to get the multiplayer to work but the campaign is absolutely good not story heavy or story orientated at all just good gameplay it uh, it's got a really good differing I don't know if, if that's a word, but one it got multiply settings and they're all different from each other. There's a Russian campaign on the Eastern Front as uh, the Soviets. You play in Africa as the Brits. You play in Normandy as both the Brits and the Americans. Yeah. Not story heavy, but great gameplay. You're missing out if you're an FBA, FPS guy and you haven't played it. Number 1. Mass Effect 1. It has aged surprisingly, surprisingly much, but it was an Xbox exclusive at first, so that it's a bit downsized graphics isn't surprising. The story is good though, I haven't finished it. The gunplay is, uh, well, it's probably, well, it is worse than everything else on the list. It's uh, pretty average. Some might say it's bad, but, well, it's good enough. The story is worth it. The worst thing is the saving. The auto saving is better than nothing, but pretty bad. You need to manually save often, or you will lose a lot of progress. Yeah. Not a multiplayer game, single player, 
and uh, I haven't on this list but uh, I also want to make a shout out maybe I should have made a mod of the year as well or that a mod that I played of the year I want to make a recommendation for what's uh, for the a mod for what would be the oldest game of those I have mentioned so far and that's Command and Conquer the best series ever Generals and uh, the mod for that game among them Rise of the Reds go play them Generals is great the mods for them makes it even greater adds more factions more gameplay more units more awesome stuff more super weapons what's not to enjoy the mods well the rival the, the main game the base game in quality and well they've got bunch of years to polish it and it's you could say it's even better than ba than the base game so you like RTS you like Command and Conquer you like Generals you like mods you are absolutely missing out if you're not playing it and that's the last thing I have to say I am um, well the recorder now says I have been talking for around 14 minutes there was a lot of empty space there so in the video but uh, well to editing I will have to cut something people aren't gonna watch a 40 minute video with a YouTube nobody it's fun to make and however long you're watching thank you was fun to do, fun to talk fun year some great games playing great games from other years yeah uh, one fun, final thing R write uh, your game of the year in the comments then you can compare them to each other what did you think was best in different uh, categories genres even Thanks for watching.